Hello, and welcome to Implementing Agile Configuration Management, the first seven things you need to consider. This presentation is brought to you by Configuration Management Best Practices Consulting. I'm Leslie Sachs, and in just a few moments, Bob Aiello will be joining us to give us his view of the first seven things you need to consider when implementing configuration management in an agile development environment. Bob Aiello is a consultant and the author of Configuration Management Best Practices, Practical Methods that Work in the Real World. Bob is also the Editor-in-Chief at CM Crossroads and a member of the IEEE Software Standards Management Board. And now, here's Bob. Thank you, Leslie. Leslie is my co-author in the book, Configuration Management Best Practices. And she is also the COO of our consulting firm, which is CM Best Practices Consulting. And I want to thank everybody for joining us today. We're going to be talking about implementing agile configuration management, the first seven things that you need to consider. Now, of course, I'm going to be speaking based upon my own personal experience implementing both agile and non-agile configuration management. I've been involved in this part of the field for a very long time and my book Configuration Management Best Practices was a great opportunity for me to share some of those thoughts. But today we're going to focus on what are the first seven things that you need to consider when you're implementing configuration management in an agile setting. Now I want to mention that we're going to be monitoring our CM Best Practices Twitter feed. If you'd like to tweet us out a question or use the interface uh, that's provided with GoToWebinar, you're welcome to do either one. And we do hope you'll follow us uh, both on our website, register on our website, as well as our YouTube uh, channel where a recorded version of this webinar will be posted very soon afterwards. So the goals of this webinar, we would like to provide a practical approach to implementing agile configuration management that really supports the agile development process. And part of that has to be really thinking about how you're going to handle quality and productivity and I always like to point out that it's important to also consider how you're going to uh, pass your next audit because although we like to take a very light approach to process, very often organizations work in environments where they do have to consider IT governance and compliance and it's very important to be able to consider an audit at the same time that you're enjoying the productivity and quality gains that you get from Agile. Now let's start by just covering exactly what CM is all about. These are the four classic functions that you'll find in any standard or framework. Configuration identification, status accounting, change control, configuration audit. Essentially CM is all about tracking and controlling changes to configuration items. But I'll tell you a secret. I don't find this terminology to be very helpful. So I'd like to discuss perhaps a different way to look at it that I think will be a little bit more intuitive. How do we understand configuration management? If those terms of status accounting, what is status accounting? If those terms are not so clear, let me suggest a framework that I wrote about in my book that I do think helps people understand what CM is all about. These are the six core functions that comprise the first six chapters that I wrote about. Source code management, build engineering, environment configuration, change control, release engineering and deployment. Everything that is related to configuration management is covered in these six functions. Now in an Agile CM setting, we do have some very specific and important goals. We want to be able to rapidly build, package, and deploy our applications. We need a reliable and repeatable process. Now of course, you know, in Agile there's a de-emphasis on heavy processes, but we still need a reliable way to build our applications and we need to have traceability and what I like to refer to as forensics. You know, forensics, if you've got an application in production, you need to be able to tell 
when it was promoted to production, exactly what version it was. So I'd like to suggest these are three basic goals of any Agile CM environment. Now my colleague Mario Marrero likes to uh, take a slightly different view. He says that we have to consider CM for Agile and that is configuration management that is adapted to suit the continuous nature of change that Agile provides without sacrificing the values of CM. And he wrote this in a, his book, Adapting Configuration Management for Agile Teams. I was pleased to contribute a chapter on how to do standards and frameworks in an Agile environment. But I'd like to consider what impact Agile has on, a, on CM. If we're really going to use Agile principles to implement configuration management, and I think that's exactly what we want to be able to do, we have to take a good hard look at the Agile Manifesto. If you noticed, I put at the top here, Agile Configuration Management right over the Agile Manifesto, because I want to suggest that if we're really talking about Agile CM, we need to think about individuals and interactions over processes and tools for CM just the same way you do for the whole agile development effort and working software over comprehensive documentation and you got it customer collaboration and responding to change so I'm saying that agile CM has to first and foremost consider the important agile principles if we're going to be successful in this effort so what are the characteristics of Agile configuration management? Well, we need a customer-centric approach, but I'm going to ask you which customer. The developers, to me, are my first customers. When I'm a CM guru and I'm working in an organization, I usually call my team the Release Management Services Group, and I really focus on providing the developers with a service and treating them as if they're my customers. But then, of course, we also have the customers who are the end users of our product. In any Agile CM environment, we need to remember that Agile is very much customer-centric, and both sets of customers are very important. Obviously, a core characteristic of Agile CM is rapid iterative development and that's long been an effective way to do software development and we need a pragmatic approach to requirements requirements themselves need to be under version control and you don't want to have a very heavy approach to requirements but you want to have a pragmatic approach in other words just enough control because in many environments that I work on it's absolutely essential that we not miss a requirement and for compliance reasons, we may need to track requirements to specific change sets to show that a particular requirement has made it into a release. Now it's also important to always consider in configuration management support for testing. The entire Agile stream has to have testing implicit in every single aspect of it. And I'm going to talk separately about verification and validation, but I also want to focus first and foremost that Agile CM has a heavy testing focus, and that's just great. That's one of the reasons why it works so well. We also need to consider collaborative communication. That's a characteristic of good Agile CM, effective communication. Now, I happen to love the Scrum framework, and one of the things that Agile CM has to have is really a role in the Scrum. Uh, it is very, very important that Agile CM really participate effectively in the Scrum environment. So our, more to the Agile CM than uh, just continuous integration. Lots of folks equate continuous integration with being Agile CM. And while CI is really important, there's a lot more to Agile CM than just CI. And one of the things that is being discussed quite a bit right now is continuous delivery, and we'll talk about that further. And also the importance of having lightweight processes, lean ceremony. And our environment has to be easy to maintain. We have to be willing and able to respond quickly to change. And of course, continuous integration is part of it, and it's a key part of it. 
And I also want to focus in this webinar on the role that DevOps has and the focus on the full application lifecycle management that you need to establish. All right, what are the first seven things that we want to consider? First and foremost is source code management. Now before you go off smugly saying, ah, I already got this nailed, I'm going to challenge you because in a lot of the environments that I go in, they are really shortchanging source code management and not putting enough emphasis on what source code management is really all about. Controlling versions is necessary but it's not sufficient. There's a lot more to source code management than just version control. And source code management, if it's done well, helps manage the complexities of the software development environment. So let's talk about exactly how to do that. So here's some goals that I always have in, in source code management. The first thing is I want to guarantee that I never lose code. Now, for those of us that were involved with the Y2K effort, we had so many large corporations that just panicked because they didn't have the source code locked down. They had uh, production systems that were running for years and no one knew the exact version of the source code. So you need to know exactly what went into creating each baseline that is in production and you need to be able to make a two-line fix to the code without any chance of the code regressing. So these are the basic goals of any source code management effort. But I want to suggest there's something here that's even more important. We want to provide a means to manage complexity. Complexity is inherent in any software development effort and it's very important for us to look for ways to minimize and manage complexity effectively. So one of the ways is source code management gives us the ability to provide isolation through sandboxes. Now what that means is you create your own sandbox and you get to work in that sandbox apart from all the other developers. That means you don't get any surprises. You control the acceptance when you're going to get changes from other developers and colleagues, and sooner or later you need to integrate your changes. In fact, you want to do that earlier, but you want to control it. You don't want to get surprised by it. And you also want to be able to deliver your changes back to the whole team so that you control when your code is ready to be delivered. And you know, I always tell people, make sure that you rebase your sandbox, and that means you take the uh, updates from your colleagues before you deliver your changes back uh, to them and publish them out. This way you can resolve any issues proactively. And you also want to use source code management to improve productivity and quality. And good source code management practices really help you be able to do a whole lot more work in a short amount of time. So source code management done well is very, very important. Now my colleague Steve Burtzik wrote a book on software configuration management patterns and he talks a lot about fixing bugs while developing the next version of a product in parallel. So you've got a version of the code that's in production, you're working on next month's deliverables, things are going great, you get a phone call and somebody tells you there's a bug with the production version of the code. So you create a branch or a stream and, and you are able to put a two-line fix, a bug fix, to that production release without impacting any of the work that you're currently doing for your next release. So being able to fix bugs while developing the next version of a product in parallel is really important. And support for developers working in parallel. So if we're all working on different parts of the code, this is another pattern that is very, very important and also of course being able to track component baselines. So what this really means is we have to define the use case for how we're going to use source code management tools and frankly